Welcome to this special edition of the local campaign. We are just outside City Hall here, actually not far from the Rink of Dreams. And this upcoming election is probably going to be the most compelling election we've had in a long time. A lot of new faces around that council table. So we thought we'd take the opportunity to speak to those candidates that have decided not to run for re-election. And I start off with today's city councillor who has made that decision from Knoxdale, Knoxdale Maravell Ward 9 and that is Keith Eggly. Keith, thanks, thanks so much for joining us yeah, today. Thanks really. for having it's me. Great to have you here. I, I, you know, the, the easiest question uh, I'm going to ask each candidate is, is why now? Why the decision not to run? Well, I'm not sure it's an easy answer. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's a job that I've loved for 12 years uh, and I've really enjoyed representing the, uh, you know, my community. Uh, I, I guess there's a number of things. Um, the, the last, the last four years in particular, um, the term started with, you know, the tornado essentially, and uh, then I took on the role of public health and as as chair of the pandemic. Then my ward got hit really hard by the derecho. Uh, we had the convoy thrown in there, impacted the whole city. So um, a lot going on over the last four years and. You know, one of the things that really struck me is I was working from home, as many people were. Uh, my wife was one of those people. And she said to me one day, she said, you know, we've never worked closer together physically and I've never seen less of you. Really? Um, you know, so, you know, that really resonated with me and, and uh, gave me pause. And yeah, and I guess it changed the dynamic, right? Throughout the pandemic, I I've spoken to other counselors about this and they said, you know, the just being in person and and going by each other's offices and having those conversations one-on-one -on -one, face to face it's a lot different dynamic than these virtual meetings that you've gone through was was that a big change that did that change the way that council was run and, and maybe one of the reasons we saw some of this division yeah no I think absolutely it, you know it, it's it's much easier to be unpleasant with one another when you've got a video screen between you and the other person. Right. It's much more difficult when you're in the same room, in the same hallway, in the lunchroom, whatever, uh, having those discussions. So yeah, I, th I think COVID definitely had an impact on, on how we interact. Uh, in some ways positive, in the sense that the, the virtual meetings, the, the positive side of those is, if you're doing community consultations, that sort of thing, I think most counselors saw more people participate because you didn't have to necessarily take time from work or arrange for babysitters. You just set up your computer and you're, you, know, you knew you were going to be asked to speak around five or six or whatever the time was. And you could have your dinner, you could watch your kids and, and then take that five or ten minutes for your presentation. So in some ways it actually enhanced the ability of the public to, to engage with the city. Yeah, that's interesting, Keith. You think that's something that perhaps the next term of council, that's something they may keep, just giving that greater opportunity to citizens to, to, to voice their opinion on different topics? I, you know, I, I think it's something they should consider for sure. Yeah. I mean, part of it, I mean, putting my public health hat on, COVID's not gone. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. Uh, and we're going to have waves. As you know, as we're interviewing here, we're, we're just hopefully coming off of a summer wave of COVID. And, uh, you know, the fall, who knows, you're, you're still going to have COVID in the system and you're going to have the flu as well. So um, I, I think this idea of at least doing hybrid meetings is something that the city should consider going forward. Keith, what, what was your biggest challenge, would you say, during your three terms as, as city councilor? So I, I think, you know, at public health, chairing public health, yeah. um, you know, I started off the term by having a really good sit down with Dr. Etches, and by the end of it, we both thought we could work well together, put my name forward as uh, to, to be the chair, and, and my colleagues agreed I could take on that role. The biggest challenge at that point was the province was looking at amalgamating existing health units and, and decreasing the number of them across the province, which we had concerns about. So we spent the first probably year or so looking at that issue and, and, and working with the province and our community on that. And then, you know, all of a sudden there's COVID mm -hmm. and nobody was really quite sure what it was or how to react. And so it was learning day by day, even minute by minute sometimes. Yeah. Uh, and that first year, year and a half, constant meetings, meetings with Dr. Etches and other members of the public health team, meetings with the mayor, meetings with other levels of government to see what they could do to, to help the city. 
Um, and that went in, 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 you know, in waves as well as, as the virus did. You know, first it was, how do we try and minimize it, control it without a vaccine? And then, of course, there was the massive vaccine rollout um, that we did in the city. And, and uh, I'm so proud of the work that we did in that regard, both the city and, and public health working together. We had you know, some of the highest numbers, if not the highest numbers, of, of vaccination in the province. Yeah, absolutely. With the benefit of, of hindsight, if you could go back in time and, and, and change the way that we reacted as a city, is there anything that, that stands out to you, Keith? Yeah, that, that's a really, really hard question. I mean, right now we're seeing fatigue from people, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in terms of the messaging. But I think that messaging had to come out and had to come out hard when we did it. And it, it were simple things, but there are things that everybody could do. Everybody can distance themselves. Everybody can wash their hands and cover their mouth when they're coughing, all those things. Right. So they, they were simple instructions and we had to reinforce them a lot. Um, you know, in hindsight, yeah, there are some things that we probably did that, or at the city level that we didn't necessarily have to do. Some of the things around, you know, restrictions in public parks and, and that sort of thing, right. in hindsight, you know. But again, we were learning. We were learning every minute, every day uh, of, you know, how this, this virus spread and, and how, you know, what steps should work or could work. Uh, against its spread. So, I mean, I think what people have to remember is everybody was doing it from here. Yeah. Everybody was trying to do yeah. the right thing. We didn't always get it right, but the intention was always pure. It was to protect as many people as we could from the virus. Let's move on to another difficult file, and that is public transportation. The LRT, you know, in, in general, where we're still waiting on the results of the public inquiry. Uh, you know, I, we've seen some bad luck I mean, let's be honest, uh, getting struck by lightning, yes. you know, I, I yeah. remember the CEO saying it's the first time in his 40 years experience he's ever seen something like that. But regardless of that, um, LRT, has, I, I'm sure you've heard from your constituents, it's probably something that gets, that gets brought up over and over again. Uh, again, with the benefit of hindsight, going back with, with phase one and, and, you know, working towards phase two. What do you think you could have done differently Again, as a it's group? A, it, it's, it's a tough question. I mean, my, my office, when we're allowed in City Hall, you know, looks out over the bridge by, by the Rideau Centre. And, you know, for the first few years, you would just see the number of buses increasing and increasing and increasing. So, you know, for, for two or three hours every day, you would just have this chain of buses that was unending. And we just ran out of space. We couldn't put any more buses. The downtown couldn't handle any more traffic. Um, and we had to find a different way of, of getting people around. Um, so I, I still think fundamentally the idea of, of, of enhancing transit in the city by way of a train system is a good idea. Um, clearly it has not worked out the way we anticipated it would. And, and I think one of, the, one of the issues was it was put forward as 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 the the solution, the panacea to everything. Right. Right. So expectations were incredibly high for the performance of of the train, and it was a brand new thing. Um, uh, well, people question that even, right? Why why are we? Why did we decide to be the guinea pigs right. of a of a brand new train instead of using what's been successful in other places? You know. And I grew up in Montreal on the metro. You know, I can remember as a kid getting stuck in the tunnel, all the lights out. You know, stuff like that does happen. Yeah, yeah. I, I, does it does it happen does, on yeah, train systems. Sure. But as you say, for whatever reason, <laughs> this system, you know, and, and, you know, the latest example, quite right, the lightning strike, right? You know, I think the guy said, sure, lightning strike sometimes, but never that directly and with that impact. I've never seen that before. Um, and, you know, we've had a number of situations like that. Um, so, but, you know, I think we learn. I think phase one has taught us how to do things better than phase two, and hopefully phase two will teach us how to do better in phase three. It's a learning process, and, um, you know, we'll, I think we'll get there. We'll, we'll get to a system. Uh, it's never going to be perfect, as any train system, yeah, system yeah. I mean, in, I don't in the world the is, not, is, not, is, is not perfect, right? right? Yeah, yeah, but, the expectation isn't perfect. But, but, but. Um, I, think, I think we'll get there, and it, it'll especially... Um, as we get more branches, more lines, right? We have one line now. When it goes down, the system goes down, right? Right. Um, as we as we build it out and we 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 add the extensions, that's that's not necessarily going to be the case. There will be other options to get around town and to do things. 
Um, have you thought about what you want to do and what, what, what your future plans are? Yeah, I mean, a few things. Um, you know, I, I do some board work now. I, I sit on the board of, of YSB and, and Big Brothers Big Sisters, um, and, and that work gives me a lot of satisfaction. Um, so I foresee doing more, more work in that, sort of in the, in, in the charitable board area. Um, it's, uh, it's an important part of our city, I think. And uh, so I'd like to see, uh, I like to see myself doing more of that. And it's it's funny when you say you're not running. There's so many boards in this town, and <laughs> and, and people yeah. just come forward and say, "Would you? Are, are you interested? Would you think about it?" Um, so you know, that's that's some of the work that that I'd like to do. Uh, another file that I'm keenly interested in, and I'm a little disappointed I won't be here to see the end of it, um, is the hospital file. Um, I think uh, I think we absolutely need a new hospital uh, in the city, and and I think um, there are some roadblocks. There are I was going to say another somewhat controversial file. Yeah, uh, th right? there are there are concerns, but I, I don't think there's there's any doubt that we need that in the city, and all the decisions have been made. For example, how does the city raise their share? Does the city raise its share? Um, and you know, so I'm going to be watching that closely. I don't know if there's a role there for me or not, but it's certainly a file that. that I can tell you, fundraising would probably be a role, Keith. Yeah, yeah, no. Because what is it? I think we have to raise what five, seven hundred, yeah. five hundred to seven hundred you know, million. And, and right, the, you know, range. there's a question about whether the the city itself should be contributing, you know, and you know, and I, and I do understand that fundamentally, if you or I are traveling and get sick in Sudbury, guess what? We can go to Sudbury Hospital. Yeah. And we get sick in Toronto and go to the hospital, right? It's a provincial network. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as much as we're contributing to our hospital, we're really contributing to the network of hospitals across the province, which serves everybody whenever they need it. Yeah, um, yeah. So, um, but, you know, those are, and I want, again, going back to my, the very first question you asked me, why, right? I want to spend more time with, with my wife and my, mm -hmm. and my kids and, and, you know, just a little bit more me time, I guess. Um, yeah, you know what, you and I were talking off camera. I'd, li I'd like you to give a, a sense to our viewers of, of what it's like being a city councillor. I told you I have the greatest respect for people to, to get into any level of government, but I think municipal politics in particular, um, you know, in this day and age, emails and phone calls, and now you've got social media on top of that. Maybe give us a sense of, of what it's like being a, a city councillor in, in this day and age. Yeah, so it's it's very hard, and 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 uh, one of my colleagues, Scott Moffat, who I think you're going to be talking to later, you know, alluded to in a, in another sort of exit kind of interview that that we we participated in a panel interview. You know, it's very hard to turn it off because there's an expectation. Well, I tweeted at you. You have a Twitter account. Why didn't you see it? Right. Uh, you know. So there's Facebook and there's Twitter and there's you know TikTok and email and and everything. You know. And so there, there's this expectation that you're 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 going to get to it right away, and that's whether it's 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 a Monday or a Sunday or a morning or an e evening or whatever, right? Well, I sent it to you. So, um, you know, one thing that that amazes me and always has in this role is I don't think there's any night that I've gone to bed and not woken up, and you know, it's you know I, I turn my phone on or my laptop, and there's there's emails there. Right, people were emailing at three o'clock in the morning, yeah. four o'clock in the morning. Like, you have nothing better to do than <laughs> tell your nobody. I mean, you know, yeah. your accounts were at that time. So it, it's it's a 24-hour cycle, seven day a week, and and I'm not complaining. You know, I, I did it for 12 years. As I said, it's it's a job that I that I loved and 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 an honor I think to for people to trust you, um, to to represent them at City Hall, but you know. And, and during the during the pandemic, in particular, wearing the the role of a local councillor, but also as the chair, so I was often the one in the media on the news, talking about you know wear a mask or stay home or get vaccinated. You know, it, it became very difficult. You know, I, I I had instances where I was walking my dog down the street and people were screaming at me and yeah. swearing at me. All of a sudden, you're a target. Because because I was telling people that they should vaccinate or wear a mask. Right. Um, you know, that's not exactly what you sign on for, right? I, I don't have a problem with people disagreeing with me. That's that's public discourse. That's democracy. That's how it works. But I, but I think that 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 discourse should be as much as possible civil, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, certainly. Um, Social media takes away all of that civility. 
there's that anonymity of sitting behind your keyboard or your screen and and people can say pretty much whatever they want to say um, without without filter as you know we're not allowed to block people on social media yeah, that's um, right. you know you can you can mute them or whatever but you you can't block them so it's 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 always there. Could you leave social media? Would you, you could. be allowed to do that? You could choose to do that. Um, okay. But you know, I, I, as much as I'm complaining about social media, um, it, it does have a role. For example, after the dress show, um, people were hungry for information uh, about, uh, especially about the hydro situation. And in my ward, we had we had many areas that didn't have hydro, and a number of those areas were privately serviced. So. Their pumps weren't working, so they didn't have water, and they really wanted to know what was, what was going on. Um, so, so I was on Twitter 12, 14 hours a day, updating people that power's coming on, power's going off, city's cleaning this up, city's offering water, meals, whatever. Um, and um, you know, a lot of people came up to me after and said, "We well, wouldn't have got through those seven or ten days without those those information bites." Um. Did it did it affect your mental health at all, Keith? There were days. Yeah. There there, there were days when when uh, it was it was very stressful and and you know when when uh, when it started I would get updated daily uh, by public health and one of the things that that I would almost hear first thing in the morning was how many people in the hospital and how many people passed away. And I finally said, like, I'm not a doctor. Like, I'm not trained for that. Like, just, just give me the hot points, right? Like, I, I don't want to start every day by hearing that we have 37 more people in the hospital and three people passed away. It's important, it's, but let's talk about how we can fix it. Um, so it, it was an adjustment. It, it was an adjustment. And, and a lot of discussion between myself and Dr. Etches and, and senior folks in the city about the need to, you know, there wasn't a lot you could do, um, but the need to like set some time to step away. So even if it was just a weekend at the cottage or a bike ride or whatever, like make that time and 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 and, and take that time. Um, and you know, as I said, saw a lot of people that really struggled, yeah. really struggled with with especially if if they were put in a situation where they did get COVID, they had to isolate. That was very hard for a lot of people. Um, in terms of coping with that. What about the city itself, Keith, in, in your three terms? How has the city changed, whether, you know, positive or, 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 or negatively? I think mostly mostly for the better. I, I yeah. still remember when, when I moved here from Montreal, and, and, you know, that was, I was still in high school at the time. I'm 60 now. So, you know, that was 40-odd years ago. And I, I remember going to my parents saying, why did you do this to me? <laughs> really? Right, you know, like we lived in a real city and now we're, <laughs> you know, we're here. Like, what do you do, right? Um, and, and I laugh because, you know, growing up in Ottawa, you know, when, when you're young, so many people, oh, it's so boring. And, you know, and where, where would we go, right? We'd go to Montreal to yeah. see concerts because we didn't even have a concert venue, right? You know? Like, we didn't have a stadium big enough for, for the big concert. So that's why, you know, you know I'm I still I remember I went back to visit my sister about six months or so after we moved here. She was still living there. And we, we went out shopping and I was looking for a new pair of jeans. And I was looking at the time, it was those wide leg jeans. And, right. and finally, in one store, the guy said, like, where do you live? And I said, Auto. I said, we don't wear those here anymore. We <laughs> worn these here for, you know, six months a year. So, but, but um, you know, certainly I've grown to love the city, you know, yeah. and, and I think we've, we've made a lot of positive strides over, over the last 10 or 12 years. Um, we've gone from being a, a you know, sort of a, a small to mid-sized city to a large city. And there's been growing pains like LRT, mm -hmm. um, but there's been exciting things that have happened as well. I look at the new central library that we're, we're building, which is, which is a really exciting partnership with other levels of government, with the indigenous community. Mm -hmm. um, I look at, um, you, know, uh, you know, again, Lansdowne has, has had its ups and downs, but you look at what it is now compared to the parking lot that it was before. There's um, only one way to go, and that that was up. You know with that piece of property. You know, so we, we've done some we've done some really interesting things, I think, in the city, and and uh, there's been a lot of good growth, and um, 
you know, there, there's always work to be. I, candidates, you know, I said to me, want to talk about the ward? I'll talk to you about the ward. And, you know, one of the questions that, you know, they would often say, what do you think's unfinished? I said, look, in this job, there's always something unfinished. You know, I could, I could hold this office for 30 years, and there would still be a desk full of stuff that hasn't been done. Right. right. Um, so we're always learning, we're always growing, and I think as long as the people who are going to sit around the table come November have that mindset that it's a, you know, it's a, it's a learning experience and we should, we should take that seriously. Not be offended that we're learning, not be offended that we've made a mistake, but, right. but learn from it and move forward. I would imagine this, this idea of, a, of, of walkable communities as well, right? From ward to ward, some wards have them, and uh, quite frankly, some, some wards don't. And, and that's, that's city planning. And I know there's a new, a new master plan for, for those councillors that, that are coming in, those new councillors. Well, what advice would you give them, you know, just with regards to that master plan on, and, and how to make it really happen in this city? So I, th I think it's, again, keep an open mind. You know, going, again, going back to my ward, an area you're probably familiar with being in the business is, is uh, uh, the old CGOH site mm -hmm. where the fire was and that yeah. sat for years and years and years and people had ideas but nobody ever had a full-fledged plan as to how to develop it and and there now is a plan that's going to put somewhere between 2,000 to 2,500 units in there and when you think of that space it's it you know geographically it's just about the center of the city mm, yeah. uh, it um, you've got proximity to Maryville Road so you've got shopping you've got employment You've got parks in behind Fisher Heights, and a park will actually be part of this project as well. So when you think of 15 minutes communities, you often think of downtown, you know, a more urban setting than a suburban setting like, like I represent. But this is truly, if it's done right, and I think there's, there's, there's a real collective interest, the community and the, the developer who happens to own the land and the planning department, to make that work, I think that's gonna be an exciting 15 minute uh, community. And that ties into what I said before, very close to the baseline rapid transit corridor. So you, will, you would be able to live there, play there, work there, and get to other parts of the town very easily. Um, so I think you have to, again, think big, right? I, right. I mean, it's hard in this city, because you've got, you've got the core, the urban, you've got the suburban, and you've got the rural. We're a bit of a Frankenstein monster the province decided to push together. But that's what we have. That's what we have to work with. And you know, as my mom used to say, when you got lemons, make lemonade, right? Yeah. So I, th I think we have to really work at, at, at breaking down those walls and seeing the city as a city. Um, you know, we're ward councillors, but we're also city councillors. And I, and I think we have to see the, the, the bigger picture. And I think some of the divisiveness we've seen in the last term of council has, you know, has to be broken down. We all have to start seeing the collective goal of making the city of Ottawa a better place to live. Yeah, when you look at that, um, when you look at the city, I think something that comes to mind is, you know, I recently spoke to uh, MP Yasser Nakfi, and he's he's created this revitalization yes. task force, right? And, you know, downtown is a, is a hub in, in, in any city, and he's bringing together organizations, not-for-profit developers and so forth, individuals, uh, Ottawa, Ottawa tourism. You know, when you look at what, what what is missing, you know, and I'm still having trouble getting that out of people of, you know, what do you think is missing? How do we get people to come to a hub? And I'm not talking about tourists. I'm not right. talking about as residents. Sure. We want to come to a place where, you know, we can gather and enjoy and there's entertainment. You, you, you spoke about growing up in Montreal. People always compare us to, you know, Montreal and Toronto. I know population aside, but the, the, that, that hub, that, that buzz, a lot of people feel it's missing sometimes. Yeah, and, and, and I'm not quite sure why that is. And, and I think part of it is, is the sheer size of the city, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, as the mayor loves to pull out that map of his and say you can fit Toronto and Calgary and Edmonton and so on and so on and so on, all in the city limits, right? So it, it, it makes it hard sometimes to get places, right? Like, like a really cool thing is happening in Carp. Well, I live in Orleans. Yeah. Right. Um, I want to go to the hockey game. Yeah. I live in Orleans. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, so size is part of it. I think um, that that's an impediment. Um, but I mean, you know, we we do have exciting things, right? We've got blues fest. We've got jazz fest. We've got folk fest. We've we've got the NAC. Um, we're we're going to have, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, you know, an exciting new hub at La Breton um, through the NCC. So, you know, it's, it is coming together, 
in, in terms of that. But I, but you know, and I, I think the other thing is people think of it as a government town, right? And right. It, it is, you know, yeah, 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 it, mean, it is for sure. But, but there's a certain there's more than that. Exactly, sure. and and you know, I remember again going back, I, you know. I joked about saying my parents wanted to do this to me, but but I do remember. You know, one of the things that was really a lot of fun, and and I'm older than you, so you may not remember this, but but the I think it was the Ottawa Journal, um, hid some gold downtown. I don't know if you remember yes, this. Yes, yes, yes. And there were clues in the paper every <laughs> yeah, day, and and I it was it was exciting. Like I a bunch of buddies, like we really we didn't find it obviously, but we. We, we got into the whole thing, and you would go downtown, and there were people all over the place. And, and in particular, I remember Spark Street. One of the clues had something to do with a lion. You remember the big lion statues in front of the old yeah. cannon pole? So there were like hundreds of people like climbing all over them and looking and trying to see what, you know, you know if the citizens listening, hide some gold. Um, you know, <laughs> but, but you know, like the capacity is certainly there in the city for people to have fun and to do interesting things. And, and we, we just, we have to build on that. A uh, final question, if if you're trying to think of, I, I hate the word legacy, you know, it, I, I think it can turn people off, but, you know, if there's something, you know, that you're leaving, uh, I know we touched on it a little bit earlier, but just that you're leaving in, in your ward, not, not you know, not as chair of, of the health unit right. and so forth, but just in your ward that, that you're leaving and you're saying to yourself, wow, I'm, I'm really proud we got that done. You know, not just you as an individual, but we got that done as a community. What would that be? Well, I think the two things that stand out for me is, one is very early in, in, in my career, an opportunity came available to um, increase the size of the Animal Plaza Library. And we had to move really quickly. Um, in order to do that. It wasn't on the budget, it wasn't anywhere else. Um, Jan Harder was the chair at the time and a very experienced counselor. I went to Jan and I said, like, what can we do here? And, and we worked very close together, we worked with the community, and we, and we doubled the size of the library. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a real community hub. It's one of the busiest libraries, at least pre-COVID, um, right. in, in the city. Um, all sorts of, you know, community activities happen there, it's a gathering place, and that will be there for a long time. So in terms of a structure of that, in terms of, of coming together as a community, you know, responding to and recovering from the tornado. Um, you know, I hope people remember me fondly in that regard, um, and, 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 and remember how, how much our community pulled together. Community associations, uh, faith communities, the city, everybody just pulling together and and you know it was a time of communal meals and and offering shelter to people and wellness checks and all sorts of things and it was complete chaos in the middle of, of of an election campaign in fact i put mine on hold for a week or so and just focused on on the on the tornado relief um, but you know you can't make that stuff up like you have to live it and it happens right. and you never forget it well, Keith, I mean, you, you hinted on it. You're not going anywhere. So um, excited to see what, what's next for you and want to just thank you for your time as, as a city councillor and spending time with us here today. Thanks for the opportunity. All right.